Hey everyone, welcome to Short Circuit of Brewers. Our channel is all about electric brewing. We do electric brew days, product reviews, and how-to videos just like this one. In this video, we're going to explore wiring, uh, stripping wires, crimping wires, all those minor details that go into producing a panel. And we'll get into that right after this. So far in our electric brewing series, we've explored what electric brewing is and what components you're going to need to do it. And the, in the last series, we discussed the electric Bruna bag. Now in an upcoming episode, we are going to be doing a rims diagram, a rim system, a build. Um, Doug is providing me with a wiring diagram for that. Um, so I haven't got that from him yet, but as soon as I get that from him, um, I will be doing that video. Um, in the meantime, you guys have asked about wiring a panel or stripping and crimping wires and doing all that. So I thought I would do a video kind of in the interim while I'm waiting on how to strip the wires, how to crimp the wires, what tools you'll need, um, what some of the different types of connectors are, how those work in the system. Unfortunately, I don't have a electrical or a control panel that I can do right now. Um, maybe sometime later in the upcoming series, I will be able to do that. Uh, got a friend of mine that has been on the channel before, Mark, and he is contemplating doing an electric brew in a bag. So we've been, I'm trying to convince him to do that. And if he does that, then we'll definitely be doing his build on the channel from start to finish, from kettle to control panel to setting it up, wet test, the whole nine yards. So some of the items that you're going to need for doing the panel are going to be some wire strippers, wire crimpers, some connectors, and let's just dive right into that now all right so let's get into what tools you're going to need first off there's a few tools that are vital and then there's a few tools that are kind of optional so um, definitely you're going to need a pair of wire strippers now common uh, use or common wire strippers out there are these and i don't really like these a lot because they have a huge space in between there plus it's a pain to try to get the wire in there and strip everything properly these are also a crimper and I don't think they do a very good job. I mean, they're, they will get you by in a pinch, but I have another set of crimpers that are a ratcheting crimper that are a little bit better. So that's one style of stripper crimper. It's even got a cutting uh, jaw on it there. You can also shear bolts off in here. So multi-use, but you know, with anything that's multi-use, I think probably the only thing good for that was a Swiss army knife. So um, the next one, is a true pair of wire strippers, uh, which these are made by Klein, and you can find these at Home Depot, Lowe's, any place like that. So um, these go from 18 all the way up to 10. So that's definitely a good uh, good tool for doing the wire stripping. Uh, my crimper of choice is going to be the ratcheting crimper. This actually crimps the connectors in a better fashion. It kind of squishes them down onto the wire. Also in the operation of this you can actually take your wire connector and crimp it down and actually hold it so you don't have to worry but with the with the other type you have to put your wire in there and hold it and make sure everything's just right with these you can put the wire connector in crimp it down just enough and then whenever you get everything in place finish the crimp so and then there also there's also a release on there for some reason oh i got the wrong size connector or something you can just crimp it a little bit drop it out so those are good for that. Um, incidentally, I've got a piece of tape down here, and this is a kind of a little tip for you. If you put a piece of tape down, flip it around so that the sticky side is up. I got some painter's tape. You can stick your connectors to that so you're not chasing them all over the table whenever you're doing your wiring and everything. So that's a great tip for that. A uh, pair of needle nose with a cutter on them. Those, this is good for if you got to take a, a uh, wire that you've already got a connector on and hold it in there while you're putting a screw in the the uh, lug that works real well for that because then you can you can kind of get in there you don't have to worry about you know having your fingers in there holding everything so these are definitely a, a vital part of doing the wiring on the panel lastly as far as panel goes i like having a pair of they call these like side cutters and they have this big flat jaw on them which is a little bit wider than the typical pair of pliers that you have and the reason why i like those is because you can take 
your stiffer wire like your 10 gauge wire and you can actually take it and bend it to form a 90 degree angle. And it'll pretty much hold that, that angle depending on the, the strand of wiring that you have. So, um, and then you can make everything lay out nice in your panel. Um, I'll show some pictures of my panel. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but I did employ some of those techniques and I think it worked pretty well. So there's that. And then uh, razor knife, box knife, whatever you want to call it. This is good for stripping insulation on some of this larger wire. The uh, S-O-O-W and the S-J-O-O-W have a pretty thick, it's like a neoprene coating on the outside. You really can't, I mean, these, these type of, of strippers don't really do a whole lot of good on that. So you do need a, a knife for that. And this, these would be used for like your, either your power cable for your panel or the power cables for your elements. So we'll get into some of that in just a second. So there's several different type of connectors, uh, just, as a point of note, the red barrel on the connector indicates that the wire is, let's see, I got a guide here, from 22 to 18 gauge, and that's your gauge for your wire. So this red barreled gauge is gonna be more like what you would use for hooking up to your PIDs, some of your smaller connections, because that's gonna contain or grip a wire that's smaller than normal. The next one is the blue barrel connector. And that is for 16 to 14 gauge. So this would be like your connector for your pumps, uh, any 110 volt power that you're running throughout the system. This would be what you would use to run your neutrals around the system uh, to connect everything together. And then finally you have your yellow barrel connector. And these are anywhere from 12 to 10 gauge. So these are gonna be the connector you're gonna use for wiring up your elements and any of your 220 volt uh, circuits that you're gonna gonna be wiring, they're gonna be generally gonna be 10 gauge. So this will actually house that wire pretty well. So that is one of those. Uh, they make uh, spade connectors, fork connectors. Um, there's also eyelet connectors. These are about the only two that I generally am seeing used in connections in panels. I mean, some there are some that have like a spade connector where you can actually slip a spade over top of a, a connection sticking up. I don't see those a lot, but you know, some in some cases. I suppose some of the automation guys might use some of those if they have like a little bus that they connect everything to. So that's that. Um, and then the lug connectors or the, the eyelet connectors, those come in a lot of different sizes. And, and these are really nice because some of the panels inside have a grounding lug that is fairly large in diameter. So these are nice to fit over top of that. And you know, there's multiple sizes. You just kind of have to look and see what you need and, and use it accordingly. <clears throat> okay, so there was a question about how to multi-connect connections to either a light or a PID or something like that. Where like if you're daisy chaining your neutrals around to all the lights, to the PIDs, all that. One of the things that I want to talk about first is the size of the connector. And these are a two to six millimeter connector. And these are the size that you definitely want to use for those small connections. And the reason I say that is because if you have the six to 10 millimeter on there, it actually will not fit into, let's see if I can get that shown on camera there. It won't fit into that space there. So that is one of the things you definitely need to be aware of is that whenever you're using connections for like your lights, your switches, all those components, you definitely need the smaller, which would be two to six millimeter connector for your connection because they will, these will slide in to those areas very well and you won't have any issue with it. Now, the way that I connect multiple connectors in the system is by, when I put one of them on, I'll put one on right side up or upside down, however you wanna say it. And then the other wire that goes into the terminal will be wired the opposite direction. So what you have is you have one where the barrel is on the bottom, one where the barrel's on the top. And then whenever you go into your connector, you're going to put one one way and one the other way. And then when you get it in there, it will actually, it actually will fit very nicely and you won't have any issues with bunched up wires. So I mean, you could, you can fit two of those in there pretty comfortably with doing that method. And that's probably the best way to do it. In my opinion, you can try to twist a couple wires together and stick them in the barrel of the connector itself. But I find a lot of times that that 
is a little problematic because as you twist the two wires together, they get larger and then you're gonna have to try to go to, you'd have to go to maybe like a yellow barrel and try to find one that is, you know, the yellow barrel on a two to six millimeter size spade, which kind of hard, I don't know if they make those quite honestly, I've never sought them out, but um, that is definitely a way to be able to get two connections in there, so. All right, so we talked about some of the connectors and everything, so let's talk about actually stripping the wire and crimping the wire on there. So depending on the size of wire, you're gonna have a corresponding number on your wire strippers, and you definitely want to match the wire up with the corresponding size on the strippers, because if you don't, you can cut some of the strands inside and then you know reduce your effectiveness of your wire, so. Um, this is the 16 gauge, so I'll find the 16 gauge, and one of the ways that I make a as perfect a connection as possible is if you hold your wiring up to your connector and kind of measure the distance between the end of the barrel and the front of the barrel, you can kind of see that you're about halfway. So I'm gonna, you don't need to strip off a whole bunch of wire. I mean, it, it, the barrel is there to protect the connection, so you can you can take about half of what you measured, strip that off strip it off and then you have a connection that's ready to go into your connector. So we'll put the connector on and the optimal place for the wire to be is right there at the end of the barrel connector itself. You don't need any sticking out, but you definitely want to make sure that you have it at least flush with it. So um, using our ratcheting connector, ratcheting crimpers, we'll put it in and that has a corresponding, by the way, it has corresponding dots, red, blue, yellow, so all of your different connector types, you know which uh, bay to put those in or which jaw to put them in. So we'll take the ratcheting crimpers, stick our connector in, and you want to make sure it's flush on the other side. Make sure your wire's in the right place, and then just ratchet it down and crimp it. And there is your connection. And if you can see, it has a couple of different, it, so it crimps the barrel down, so it holds, it crimps the barrel flush with the wire on the inside. And then it also crushes the connector part at the front. So what one of these, I'll take one of these apart so you can kind of see that. So there's very little in the connector that it actually crimps the wire. So as you can see, a lot of this is just the connector itself. Oops, running away from me. So a lot of it's just the connector itself. About half of that is the actual crimp itself inside of the, the uh, barrel protection there. So. That's what we're looking at as far as that's all the wire that really, I mean, as you can see, the wire doesn't have to be stripped very much to fit properly in there. So um, let's talk about stripping some of this larger wire and what this is. Now this is, uh, I couldn't find any SJ. Actually, I asked the guy at Home Depot for some SJ00W. And then when I got it home, I found out that it was S00W. So the difference between the two is not really that much. Um, the SJ00W is rated up to 300 volts. The S00W is rated up to 600 volts. Basically just about the same uh, wiring and everything inside. They have about the same jacket. And these are resistant to oil, water, heat. So I mean, this is a perfect type of wiring to use to go from your panel to your kettle. And the reason is, because I mean, this thing is, is uh, heat resistant up to uh, 90 degrees Celsius and you could have this laying right against your kettle with boiling wort in it and you would have no problem, it wouldn't melt or anything like that. Plus, you know, it's oil resistant, it's wart, wart resistant, water resistant. So the way that I like to strip these is get my knife out and I'm gonna go just kind of around and just score this around. And you wanna be really careful when you score it around because you don't wanna cut the wires inside because then that's gonna compromise the coating or the the jacket on the wire inside so then I'll, I'll cut it and then take a look at it and then you can kind of see that you can kind of roll this around a little bit and get it to where it's it starts to come apart because it'll once you score it it'll kind of naturally tear so then as you as you roll it around and you kind of twist it and and break it if you will almost you'll find that it'll it'll come apart and if you if you're not exactly correct on your cut as you go around you can put a little cut on there and then keep going on around and then you wind up with a good cut no wires cut in there because you've actually kind of broke the wire before it got there so 
that is a good way to do that and then you're left with a nice clean cut there then it's just a matter of taking your strippers you can measure your distance so it's about half inch so we'll do about a quarter of an inch maybe three sixteenths something like that I always like to twist the wires a little bit because sometimes after they get after you uh, take the jacket off they're kind of frayed a little bit so then we're gonna put the connector on and as you can see with that I mean that was a perfect strip there because it uh, the wires just sticking out of the end everything is covered in there get a ratcheting crimper crimp it down voila perfect one thing I will say that uh, I do like about the eyelets whenever you put your connection in your housing for your element I do like these because there is a little bit of vibration that can occur with electricity and should the grounding nut come a little bit loose a fork connector would have the opportunity to fall off of that so I do like these if you can put them on especially the ground put them on there because even if it comes loose it's still going to maintain contact with that grounding lug in there so that is definitely a plus on that one other thing that I wanted to talk about and I use these in my panel is they're they're a connection to put a zip tie through so you can put a zip tie through there put your wires in there obviously you wouldn't use it for that wire but inside your panel you could use multiple wires do that and that would work very well for you so um, I don't know if you guys wanted to whoo, I don't know if you guys want to see some soldering or not I did have to do some soldering in my setup because the pump connections were not quite long enough if you do, you know, hit a comment up down below. Let me know if you want to see that. I didn't know for sure if, if you guys needed to see that skill or wanted to learn that or not. So I kind of left that out of this video. But if this helped you, give it a thumbs up. Give us a like. We certainly appreciate it. And we're glad to be on this journey through electric brewing with you. It's something that I really enjoy a lot. And hopefully it helps you out and can kind of demystify some of the things about it. Uh, I think this was a very pertinent video at this stage of the game with the series we got going on because a lot of people maybe don't know wiring and how to put connectors on and how to strip the wire and what tools to use. So if you liked it, definitely share it with your friends. Um, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to be you know notified of more content, subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it. We make content for you guys and uh, let you guys dictate what you want us to do next. So let me know if you guys want to see some soldering. I can incorporate that into another video. I did have some footage of drilling some holes in Kyle's panel. I didn't know if people really wanted to see that or not. I mean, it's to me, it's kind of boring, but maybe you guys want to see it. I don't know. Let me know. I've got footage that I never released on our channel before. So if you want to see that, that's great. Um, if you want to see Mike's drilling of holes in his panel, I'll put a link right here. And uh, until next time. We'll see you.